My name is Sachiko Okamoto. I'm Guillaume Piro. We work at Virginia Tech as scientists. And this project that you're going to do is about amino acids and plants. And one of the reasons that we are interested in amino acids in plants is that it's relevant to our health and animal health. So as you know, we need protein for our bodies. You know, our muscle tissue or enzymes that's important in running our um, cells um, requires proteins. And they um, consist of 20 amino acids. And we cannot make eight out of those 20 amino acids in our body. So where do these amino acids come from if we have them and we cannot make them? They come from our food. And uh, those uh, amino acids eventually or originally comes from either plant or microbial sources because those organisms can make all of the amino acids. So if we eat soy protein, for example, that, you know, that's direct uptake of uh, um, amino acids from plant source, if we eat pork, the pork eats plants, then that um, essential amino acid come to our body um, kind of vicariously, so to speak, through pork. In developing worlds, sometimes people rely on starchy um, plant sources like uh, rice in Southeast Asia or um, cassava in Africa. And those plants are pretty poor in essential amino acids and protein in general, so people suffer protein and essential amino acid deficiency. So um, that becomes a problem in those regions. That means that if we want to improve animal and human nutrition by increasing protein content intake, we can achieve that by increasing protein content in the seeds that are a seed or part of a plant which are used to feed animal or as used as food for a human. But how can we achieve that? So to manipulate the um, transport of amino acids in plants, we have to look a little bit closer into the anatomy of plants. Here is the schematic representation of a plant, and plants usually take up nitrogen in a form of inorganic uh, sources such as nitrate and ammonium. Okay, and nitrate usually, t after taken up by root, is transported to the leaves where it meets the carbon back uh, backbone that is um, generated by photosynthesis, and they make amino acids there. Then those amino acids are transported through phloem to the seas or some other organs that, uh, where amino acids are required. On the other hand, uh, ammonium here uh, is usually toxic to the cell. So what plants do is to fix it in the root into amino acids. Then it's going to get transported through uh, xylem. And uh, therefore, uh, xylem and phloem both contain amino acids. And essentially, they both work together to support uh, amino acid to the seas. Okay, so basically what it means is that the amino acid we find in the seeds as protein, remember protein are made of amino acids, come from the leaves. They always trans translate from the leaves. So what we, uh, that's where, again, the notion of transport is involved. Yeah, so indeed uh, the supplied amino acid to seeds are very important in the composition of seeds. We know that uh, if we take out those seeds and culture them in presence of a lot of amino acid or less amino acid, we can manipulate the content of protein in the seeds. So if we can, for example, increase the amino acid supplies to seeds, maybe we can produce a grain that's more rich in proteins. Okay, So that's where um, our question comes from. And uh, we know quite a lot about how seeds import amino acid. Um, but we don't know much about how leaves or other tissues export amino acids into the xylem. And that's where this project comes from. And uh, where uh, the question that you're going to ask of using the mutant of Arabidopsis plant.